Hello and welcome back to Author Journey. My name is CJ Anaya. Today we're going to talk a little bit about publishing options simply because I've had a lot of questions about that and mostly what other things you can do besides publishing on Amazon. So I thought I would go over a few distribution sites, a few companies that you can use if you would like to get your ebook and your paperback book on different online stores, different retail sites like Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple, iBooks. So that there's different ways that you can do that. Now some people like to go to each individual store and upload their own books or publish their own books to each individual store much like you would do with Amazon. So you have your, your Kindle Direct Publishing account with Amazon where you can upload your ebook and you can upload your print book and you have print on demand options there. Well, what's great about that is that you have full control of the product page, but many times what you don't get is these ebooks being distributed to other people because you're only uploading to Amazon. So instead of having to go to each retail site and go through those motions again, uploading all that information, you have distributors who will do that for you. So there are three different websites or companies you could use. One of them is draft to digital Now, draft to digital only does basically what its name says is digital copies, just eBooks. And they distribute to all of these stores right here, Amazon, Apple books, Barnes and Noble, Baker and Taylor. So you see all of these places that your eBook will get into. All you have to do is upload your EPUB file and your cover and in input all that information and then you can have those published on all of these other stores. Now Smashwords does the exact same thing. If you want to have your books uploaded and published to all these different online retail sites, then you can go through Smashwords and Smashwords actually has a much longer list and a bigger catalog of bookstores that they distribute to. So you would just need to take a look at that and see if you would prefer Smashwords over that. Now Ingram Sparks is just a little bit different because they not only do ebooks, but they do what Amazon does. They offer print on demand services. One thing they don't offer or one thing they do offer that Amazon doesn't is, is hard copies. So you can actually upload your EPUB or your ebook file and your print file, and you can get hardcover and paperbacks as long as you have the PDF file because they'll accept PDF and then they'll accept EPUB. Okay, so those are your three options. And Ingram Sparks, they get into lots of retailers. I believe they have 39,000 people or 39,000 retail sites that they work with, not just within the United States, but internationally as well. So you can have your books uh, published to stores internationally, which is very, very cool. Now, I did have a question about how you can get your physical copies into physical bookstores, because what this is doing is it's distributing to all of the online stores, not actually the physical ones. Now, Ingram Sparks will let all these stores know that your paperback book and your hardcover books are available to be ordered and to be printed, and Ingram will fulfill those orders just like Amazon fulfills their orders for any print-on-demand book. So it's just a matter of those bookstore owners deciding that they actually want to order copies, physical copies, and have them on the shelves. Now, generally, that happens more with traditional publishing companies. Uh, they have vendor agreements where these bookstores, these physical bookstores, have um, a guarantee that if anybody returns the book, they're going to get their money back. So there's return policies involved. It's very, very complicated. A lot of times you have to, like for Barnes & Noble, you have to show them a marketing plan if you want to submit your book to be considered uh, as, as a book that they would buy and actually put on their shelves. I have heard of several authors just going to their local Barnes & Noble and just telling them that they're authors and asking them if they would be interested in buying their books on, a, on that local level. Maybe not getting your book into every single Barnes & Noble store, physical store, but just going and seeing if locally you can get your books on their shelves. And some have had a lot of success and haven't had to do any marketing campaigns or any, any plans, show any plans as to that. The, the bookstore will buy the books from them and then if they sell well, they'll buy more. Uh, you would have to do a lot of legwork to get your books 
into physical stores without um, a traditional publishing company doing that for you because these companies have these vendor contracts with all of these stores and can get those physical books into physical stores. So it just depends on what you want to do. You can you can look into that more. I feel like it is a lot of work, but it, it, it could be worth it if you feel like creating those agreements. If not, then just be aware that you are getting your books into all of these online retail stores, just not in the physical ones. And that's okay because you're going to be seen. And as long as you're doing the marketing that you need to do, you can drive more traffic to your books no matter what store it's in. Now, I don't have a lot of experience publishing with Ingram Sparks. Um, I do have experience pu publishing with Draft to Digital, and I enjoyed that quite a bit. Smashwords was a little bit more difficult, but I think that they've streamlined the process and made it a, a little easier since you know the time that I tried to do this. One thing that you will find in common with all of these when it comes to eBooks, you have to have an EPUB. So Amazon is the only store where it's either a Mobi file or, or Word file. And then for all these other stores, all these other distributors, you need to have an EPUB file. And many people get a little nervous about that because there are a lot of options for Kindle and how you can create a Kindle ebook, but how do you create an EPUB? And are there free options? And the answer to that is yes, there is a free way to do that. You can actually use a program called Calibre. It's free to download. And what you would do is you would simply take your PDF or a Word document and you would come here and you would add it. Okay, so let's just click Add Books. I've been monkeying around with the formatting on Marry Your Billionaire, just having fun with the Kindle Create app and also discovering a very new add-in for Word, which is the Kindle Create add-in. And I can talk about that in a different video. So I'll just, we'll just do Marry Your Billionaire, even though it's not completely and totally formatted yet. And then what you can do is you can add the book. And then you can, if you need to add any metadata, you can just click in there. Okay, if you need to change things around. If you need to add the cover, you just hit edit, metadata. And I'm not a fan of that cover. So just hit browse. And that cover shows up. If there's any metadata you want to put in here, you can. I'm not really going to worry about that right now. Then you hit OK. And it's right here. And then what you can do, once you've got all that metadata in, you've got the cover in, you can, you'll see right here that it, the format that you currently have is a docx. What you can then do is hit convert books. And you want to go from a docx to EPUB. And there's all these different things that you can do and different options. I'm trying to make it pretty simple though. So I just want it to go from, <laughs> from docx to EPUB. Just want it converted. Okay, now you'll see that it created it for an EPUB. What you can do is you can click to open path or click to find it. It's an easy way to find it. And it's right here, the CPUB file, okay? Now also what you can do just to make sure that it does look good is you can go back in here and you can just click on it and open it up. Because a lot of times if you don't have the formatting right, and I know that looks a little squished, but it'll be fine once it once it converts. Sometimes if you don't have all the formatting done correctly, because remember, you're, you're formatting for your books in Word or maybe you're doing it in Scrivener or wherever it is you're doing. Most people want to do just a Word document. So you need to make sure that all that formatting is correct and done well before you actually export it or convert it as an EPUB. Otherwise it's going to look really funky. So we'll just scroll down a little bit so you can see. So we've already I already had all of this formatted. I did this in Kindle Create. It was really easy because I could pick the theme and I could pick what that needed to look like. You just scroll down a little more so that I can show you what. So I don't have it all formatted yet. You can see this isn't formatted the way I wanted it to be. I just wanted to show you an example. Okay. So mostly it looks good. There are still some stylistic things that I need to go in and do. But on the whole, I like the way that it looks. Your next step, once you do get that converted into an EPUB, 
is you want to make sure that you'll actually be able to to upload it onto either draft to digital or Ingram Sparks. And so what happens is you actually have to go through an EPUB validator to make sure that there are no errors. And so you're going to choose the file, then click on it. You can drag it over there, figure it out however you want. Then you hit validate. And I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if there are errors in here because I have not finished formatting things and fixing things. But what you want is for the validator to say, hey, this checks out pretty well so that you won't have any problems uploading it to Smashwords or Draft2Digital or Ingram Sparks. Because if you upload it and there are errors, they're going to say, sorry, we got problems with this. We can't accept it. So you've got, oh, that surprises me. <laughs> so that's what it'll say. It'll say, congratulations, no problems were found in this. So it would be good to go. And you can actually just look that up, EPUB Validator online. There'll also be links in draft to digital and in Ingram Sparks or even on Smashwords, where as you go through and find ways to validate it, they have links you can go and, and validate it yourself. I'll put these links in the description box below just so it's easier for you to find. You can check those out. Now, I had an EPUB file that I was doing, I think it was about a week ago, and I, when I did the validator, it came up and there were like 70 errors. And I just sat there thinking to myself, oh my goodness, because I had taken a Word document that I thought was completely finished, no formatting errors. I brought it into Scrivener, just because for me it's easier to export things from Scrivener, such as Mobi or EPUB or a PDF, all of that, uh, that ability to do that is all there in, in one program. Um, but, you know, Scrivener costs money, so I'm trying to give you guys ways to do this for free if you need to do it for free and you don't want to pay for Scrivener. But I had it in Scrivener, and once I exported it to EPUB, there were like 70 errors popping up, and they were all the same error. So I sat there thinking to myself, I don't know what to do. <laughs> And so what I found was, uh, well, there's a group called 20 Books to 50K on Facebook. And I've given you links to this group before, but they're very knowledgeable and helpful. So many of these authors are indie authors. They do a lot of their own HTML coding. And I was able to get on there and ask one of them what this particular error meant. It had to do with um, parsing the file inappropriately. There were alignment issues. And eventually what I found was that the first paragraph was justified to the right and the rest of the paragraphs in the chapter were justified to the left. So that created an ebook error um, that that alignment that it talked about, the alignment was just off within each chapter. And for some reason, within each chapter, the first paragraph, it was aligned right <laughs> instead of left. So it was an easy fix, but it's like deciphering those codes was a real problem. And then after that, I ran into a few more errors and I thought to myself, well, there's got to be something online that can help me just recognize what these HTML tags are that are being talked about in these error messages. Like a line was a tag, IL was a tag, P was a tag, and I found out that P meant paragraph and IL meant the end of a list. But the only way I was able to do that was by finally finding something online that could help me. So I want to direct your attention to that. I know that I'm combining quite a few of these things in here, but that's just because through the process of formatting your own books, if you decide to do that, you're going to run into these problems and you're gonna to have to learn how to troubleshoot. And it's annoying if you can't find the answer. So I wanna be able to give these answers to you. So what I did is I, I, I just typed in HTML tags. You could also type in HTML codes, but you can find HTML codes and tags references that you can then match up to what is being discussed within the error message because the error message is basically just filled with gobbledygook. It's a bunch of HTML tags and codes. And if you can figure out what those are and then what they're supposed to be, because it'll say you have this tag here and it should be this tag, then you can figure it out pretty quickly. So as I was going through, I, I figured out that these were headers and I was looking for that P one and I realized that that was, a, that was for a paragraph and then I was able to figure out that the IL was for lists, okay? And so once you figure those things out, you can go back into your manuscript and kind of pinpoint the areas that actually need to be fixed. 
And I didn't have a lot of numbered lists or bullet lists within the book. So I just found the two areas where I actually had that and checked to see if at the end of those lists I had an unnecessary paragraph. Um, and I did, and I was able to take that out and then the error was gone. So what would have been a real nightmare trying to pay someone to convert that EPUB for me, it was just a matter of troubleshooting and figuring a few things out. You can always ask questions and learn from people. The best way to do that is, is Googling things or to just jump into a group with lots of seasoned indie authors who have probably been dealing with the same problems that you have. And I mean, I got a response right away in 20 books to 50K. And once they clued me into the fact that it was HTML coding and I was able to fix that, that first error that was actually 70 repeated errors. <laughs> once I figured that out, then I was able to take a look at the other few errors that were in there and go, huh, okay. And then kind of troubleshoot with the HTML coding. And, and I think for me, I just sometimes feel very intimidated thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm smart enough to learn all these different things. But honestly, your ability to learn and to troubleshoot and to figure out things, it's infinite. So don't don't feel like you, unless you want to, don't feel like you have, you've run into a problem. You're like, oh, I should have had a professional do this. You could probably figure it out on your own as long as you have resources and forums and people you can talk to. So I'm going to put a link in the description box for 20 books to 50K. Go join that group. It's a great group. They have a conference every year. I'm going to be attending it in, in November. It's in Las Vegas. And they just have a wealth of information, including um, a, a fact sheet where all of these common questions that are asked, everything's been organized. There's so many resources. So before you even need to ask a question, you go to that and you read through to see if your question has already been asked and answered. It's very, very helpful. So that link is in the description box. The link for Calibre is right there. I can put a link in for the EPUB validator, but I just wanted to give you guys publishing options, troubleshooting options, a free way to export your EPUB. And then if you guys have any questions or any thoughts or comments, anything helpful that you might want to add to help the rest of us, I would completely appreciate it. So please subscribe if you like this channel, if you're new to the family. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and found it helpful, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.